In Central Asia, along the Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan border, there lies the Aralkum Desert. It has the typical traits of your standard desert, low precipitation, infertile land, generally inhospitable. However, it has a few unique features, the most notable of which are the thousands of abandoned boats lying half buried in the desert sand. It may be baffling to see boats stranded thousands of miles away from the nearest ocean. However, this desert was not always a desert. This was once the Aral Sea, the world's fourth largest saltwater lake. Today, we are going to look at the shrinkage of the Aral Sea. For nearly five million years, the Aral Sea teemed with life, fish within its waters and people along its shores. Fed mainly by two rivers, the Amidaria and the Sirdaria, the Aral Sea provided a livelihood for many people. Like its neighbour, the Caspian Sea, the Aral Sea represents a closed drainage basin. The water flowing in does not flow out to any other body of water and the system is kept in equilibrium through evaporation. Though currently on the border between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, the Aral Sea once lay wholly within the USSR. And in the late 1940s, the Soviet administration sought to transform Soviet agriculture through the Great Plan for the Transformation of Nature. This initially aimed to transform the steepy grasslands into high yield farmland through massive irrigation schemes and shelter belt construction, learning lessons from the Great Dust Bowl in America. However, this also included plans to transform the Uzbeki desert into the world's largest cotton belt. Cotton on its own is an incredibly thirsty crop. The fact that the Soviets planned to grow millions of tons of it in the middle of the desert didn't help the demand for water either. The Cotton Belt project was going to require tens of thousands of cubic meters of water to be successful, and the only place this was going to come from was the Amidaria and the Sirithdaria. Massive irrigation canals were constructed to divert water from the rivers and, as the desert slowly turned into farmland, the demand for water grew and grew. By the 1960s, over 20 cubic kilometers of water a year were being diverted from the rivers to the desert. Let me say that again, 20 cubic kilometers. That's nearly 2 billion liters of water per year. And just to put things in perspective, the estimated volume of Lake Superior is 12,000 cubic kilometers. Not surprisingly, with the volume of Lake Superior being diverted away from it on an annual basis, the Aral Sea began to shrink. From 1960 to 1970, the Aral Sea shrank by about 20 centimeters a year, but in the next decade, the rate tripled to nearly 60 centimeters a year, and by the 1990s, the Aral Sea was shrinking at an incredible rate of 90 centimeters a year. The decline continued into the 2000s, with the lake eventually spreading into four separate wakes, two of which are now completely dried up. From an initial surface area of around 68,000 square kilometers in 1960, the Aral Sea now measures only about 7,000 square kilometers, which is split between two separate lakes. The shrinkage of the sea has had a disastrous impact on the local environment and the health of its inhabitants. As the lake's shore retreated, the plains left behind were covered in massive deposits of salt. The high salinity makes the land completely useless for farming, but the strong winds that sweep across the former lake bed also whip the salt up into massive dust storms. This would be a massive problem on its own, but the salt in question is particularly toxic. Years of runoff from farming, various industry, and Soviet weapons testing on Resurrection Island have flown into the Aral Sea and now have come back to plague the region. The toxic dust storms of the Aral Sea have caused huge health problems for the local people, with rates of respiratory illnesses, especially tuberculosis, as well as anemia, being incredibly high in the area. Efforts have been made to save what is left of the Aral Sea, However, most of the damage has already been done, and it would take huge efforts to revert it to anywhere near its original state. As Uzbekistan is unlikely to give up cotton farming anytime soon, and suggestions of diverting water from other rivers, however successful this would be, would simply be repeating the mistakes of the past. Kazakhstan has made great efforts to restore the North Aral Sea, the breakaway lake that lies within its borders. 
The construction of the Dyke Coraral Dam in 2005 separated the North Aral Sea from the rest of the basin. It allows the water of the North Aral Sea to pool behind it, slowly replenishing and gradually restoring the ecosystem. This, however, dooms the Aral Sea to a fate of desertification, as the dam deprives it of the majority of the water from the north. Though the South Aral Sea represents the majority of the former lake area, saving it would require monumental human effort, and at this stage, saving what's left of the North Aral Sea is probably the best that can be done.